Alright, if you've been following me for some time, you probably know that during 2020, I prepped for the hardest exam that I've ever taken, the USMLE Step 1. For those who don't know, this is not your typical med school exam. This is an 8 hour long test with around 280 questions or so that tests pretty much all of medicine and defines a big chunk of what your future is going to look like. That's why it's very common to see people preparing for 6 months, a year, some even up to 2 full years, like dedicated years. I personally prepped for 6 months dedicated and 6 months half time and I thankfully did pretty good but during my prep I burnt out. Like as bad as it gets. And that's a very strange thing to explain to people who haven't gone through that, but it's like seeing life through a gray lens. You have no motivation to do anything, your mind wanders all the time, you have zero concentration power, you even start hating the things you previously enjoyed. And that feeling eventually affects the rest of your life. It starts taking a toll on your personal relationships, you start hurting the people around you, and the worst part is that you're so caught up with yourself that you don't even care. And I wanted to make this video because ever since I uploaded my first USMLE video on YouTube, I've been getting at least one message per week of someone who's going through the same. And if that's just the people who seek help with me, I cannot even imagine how many people who don't seek help are out there. And the thing is that when I reached for help, everybody told me the typical advice of, hey, take a couple of weeks off, forget about the USMLE or go to therapy. And I know that advice is given with the best of intentions, but it just didn't work for me. So the point of this video is to share with you the three things that actually made a difference, that actually helped me improve my state of mind and help finish my prep and reach my goal without, well, killing myself in the process. And so let's get to it. All right. The first thing that you have to come to terms with is that you burned out for a reason. You see, burning out is like having a baby. It doesn't just happen out of the blue. It needs a sum of factors to occur. Now, those set of factors with respect to burning out changes on a case-to-case -case basis, but almost always comes back to being one of the following four. First, you did way more than you could. Second, you didn't use periodization. Third, you had no respect for your personal life. And fourth, you made your life unidimension. Let's start with the first one, doing more than you can. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Overworking yourself by choice is great for short-term goals, and you may even get away with it every once in a while. But if you're feeling tired all the time, either you're sick or work's starting to catch up with you. And believe me, you don't want that happening. Why? Because it makes you inefficient. You see, you're not a machine. The math isn't as simple as if I work an extra hour a day, I'll get X more things done in a month. You're the most unpredictable puzzle there is. That extra hour you plan on doing may be your tipping point, the one that takes the stamina completely out of you. And without stamina, let's say that you work at 80% of speed instead of 100. So the normal amount of work you previously did now takes another 40 minutes to be completed. So that extra hour is really leaving you with something like 20 more minutes of work. You keep running that experiment enough and you'll find yourself in a position very similar to where I ended up during my USMLE prep. You see, the first few months I could study one block of 40 Q&As in just a couple of hours. But a couple of months later, I was so outworked and tired that it took me six whole hours to review the same amount of questions. I'm feeling miserable while doing them, I might add. So don't behave as if you're a machine, because you're not. And remember, you don't just want to study today, you want to study today and tomorrow and next week and next month. And to be truly efficient at each one of those stages, you have to plan a long-term strategy, which might imply having to turn down a notch your expectations on the amount of work you're supposed to do right now. Okay, reason number two, you didn't use periodization. The fact of the matter is, no matter what you do, if you do it long enough, you'll get tired of it. But the good news is that there are ways of preventing it, or at least making everything a little bit more enjoyable for you. And periodization is one hell of a weapon to do that. The principle is very straightforward. By varying the amount of work you do each day, your experience changes. At a macro level, you're doing the same amount of work you'd be doing anyways, but instead of distributing uniformly, you vary it. You program lighter loads for some days or weeks and more demanding goals for other days or weeks. Personally, this was a game changer for me because it gave me the feeling that I wasn't being the slave of my routine. 
Just having the freedom to do whatever you like every once in a while is liberating, to say the least. And the tougher days? Well, they build your stamina. They give you something to push against, to prove yourself, to fight with whatever means necessary. Because you know, that also gives life its meaning. Having some type of pushback, of challenge. A life without challenges is a very dull and boring life. So try to apply some type of periodization to your schedule. Vary it either on a day-to-day, -day, week to week, or month-to-month -month basis. Try out different things, see which one you enjoy the most. Okay, reason number three, you need free days. Like, there, there's no way around it, you need them. And they're not meant to be 24 hours of doing absolutely nothing. They're just an excuse to take some time off from your main activities in order to keep you properly motivated once you return to them. I suggest at a minimum having one day off every couple of weeks, but that's really not set in stone. You can vary it according to where you are on your schedule. And finally, reason number four is unidimensionality, which is probably the one that impacted me the most. You see, during my step one prep before I began, I said to myself, okay, you have one opportunity to crush this exam. So you're gonna devote yourself 100% to the goal. So no social media, no YouTube videos, no second projects, no going out with friends, no family reunions, nothing. You'll just wake up, eat, study, and sleep. That's it. And that sounds like a very good plan for like 15 seconds. The big problem is that again, you're not a machine. If convincing your mind to avoid procrastination for one day is such a struggle, what makes you think that you can all of a sudden rip your life from everything that's not study and expect her to work as if nothing happened? As I have alluded in my other videos, you should treat your mind as a puppy. If you want her to behave, take her for a walk, feed her regularly, play with her. If you give her what she needs, she'll cooperate with you. If not, she'll just bite you. And you probably deserve that. So yeah, keep your life with the things that make you want to wake up in the morning. The key to sticking to a schedule is creating one that makes you feel as you're living the best life you can while simultaneously taking you closer to your goals. For me, that meant having 8 hours of sleep, doing exercise on a daily basis, and doing one activity I enjoy each day. And if you're anything like me, at first you'll feel like you're wasting a lot of time and that you could be spending all of this time studying or doing this or doing that. But you have to realize that you're not wasting time, you're just giving your mind the energy she needs. And you should probably stop thinking in terms of study hours and instead adopt a mentality of efficiency. Because why the hell would you rather spend 9 hours doing something if you could carry the same amount of work and get the same things accomplished in 4 hours? Remember, studying hard and studying smart is not the same thing. But anyways, that was it for the video. If you found it useful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. That really helps me to continue doing these types of videos completely free of charge for you guys. And if you want to learn more of my tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in that next video.